Hi everyone, today I will talk about the main keys of using Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an orchestration tool allowing you to run and manage your container-based workloads. Today I want to take a high-level look at the reference architecture of managed Kubernetes service and dive a little bit deeper about how you would do a deployment of your microservices. Let's get started here. So we have got here sketched out two sides of the puzzle. On left side here, we have got the cloud side, and what we got uh, is a very important component that's going to be a Kubernetes master. The Kubernetes master has a lot of important components on it, but the most important piece that we want to talk about today is going to be the API server. The Kubernetes API server running on a master is integral to running all of your workload and exposes a set of capabilities. The Kubernetes API server running on a master is integral to running all of your workloads and exposes a set of capabilities, allowing us to define exactly how we want to run our workloads. On the right side here, on a customer managed side, we have got our worker nodes, which are all also Kubernetes based. There is one major component that I want to point out to running on every single Kubernetes worker node, and that's going to be a kubelet. The kubelet essentially is uh, responsible for scheduling and making sure apps are healthy and running within our worker nodes. You can imagine that the master and the kubelet are going to be working together quite often. Let's take a step back. Why would someone want to start using Kubernetes? Well, maybe they have some microservices that make up a cloud native application. As we all know, microservices are talking to each other over the network. To really simplify this example, let's say we have got a front-end and a back-end. And those are the two components that we want to scale out and deploy to the cluster today. So Kubernetes uses a YAML to define the resources that are sent to the API server, which end up creating the actual application. So let's get started by that by sketching out a simple YAML for deploying a pod. A pod is a really small logical unit which allow you to run a simple container in a worker node. So we will start with that. Let's say we have got a pod and what we need is an image that is associated with it. Let's say that it is a container. We already pushed up to Docker Hub and we will use a my registry for this one. So image name, let it be my name, we told us. And let's say the name of the application is just F for front end and version number one. And one more thing that we want to add here. Let's just say we have got labels. Labels are very important and we will talk about why in a second here. But they allow us to define exactly what the type of artifacts we have got here is. So for the labels we will just say the application is F for front end. Alright. So we have got that created. And what we want to do is to push it through our process to get into worker node. What we have got here is a kubectl. Using that, we are going to be able to deploy the simple manifest that we have got and have it in one of the, our worker nodes. So we will push the manifest through kubectl. It hits the API running on the Kubernetes master and that in turn is going to go and talk to one of the kubelets because we just want to deploy one of these pods and start it up. So taking a look, let's say that it starts it up in our first worker node here with the label that we have given it. Application is front end. And one thing to note here, it actually does get an API address as well. Let's say we get an internal IP address that ends in A and dot one. So at this point, I could SSH into any of the worker nodes and use that IP address to hit that application. So that's great for deploying a simple application. Let's take it a step further. Kubernetes has an abstraction called deployments, allowing us to do something and create something called a desired state. So we can define the number of replicas we want for that pod. And if something were to happen to the pod and it dies, it would create a new one for us. So we have got a pod labeled as application is front end. And we want to say that we want to create maybe 
three replicas of that. So going back to our manifest here, one thing we need to do is to tell Kubernetes that we don't want a pod, we want a template for our pod. So we will scratch that out and we'll create a template for our pod. On the top of that, we have got a few other things that we want. So the numbers of replicas, let's say we want three. We have got selector. So we want to tell this deployment to manage any application deployed with that kind of the name here. We'll say match that selector here. Again, this is not entirely valid YAML. I just want to give you an idea of the kind of artifacts that Kubernetes is looking for. The last thing that we have got here is what kind of artifact is this? And this is going to be deployment. All right, so we have scratched out that pod and we have got a new manifest here. What is going to do? We are going to push it through kubectl. It hits the API server. Now, Kubernetes needs to manage the desired state. So what is going to do is, it is going to manage that deployment for as long as we have that deployment and we don't want to delete it. It is going to manage that here. So we will say that it's great a deployment. And since we have got free replicas, it's always going to ensure that we have got free running. As soon as we got a deployment created, we realize, hey, something is wrong. We only got one, we need two more. So what is going to do is it's going to schedule out deploying that application whenever it has resources. We have got a lot of resources still. Most of these worker nodes are empty. So it decided to put one in each of these different nodes. So we have got the deployment created and let's just say we do the same thing for our backend here. So we'll create another application deployment. Application is backend. And for this one, let's just scale it out two times. So we'll go here. Application is backend and everyone is happy. Now we need to start thinking about communication between the services. We talked about how every pod has an IP address, but we also mentioned that some of these pods might die. Maybe you will have to update them at some point. When a pod goes away and comes back, it actually has a different IP address. So if you want to access one of those pods from the backend or even external users, we need an IP address that we can rally on. And this is a problem that has been around for a while. And service registry and service discovery capabilities were created to solve exactly that. That comes built with Kubernetes. So what we are going to do now is create a service to actually create a more stable IP address so we can access our pods as a singular application rather than individual different services. So to do that, we are going to take a step back here and we are going to create a service definition around those three pods. To do that, we are going to need some more manifest YAML. So we will go back here and create a new section in our file. This time we have got a kind service and we are going to need a selector on that. Again, this is going to match the label that we have got here. And the last thing that we need here is a type. So how do we want to actually expose this? We will get to that in a second. By default, that type is going to be cluster IP, meaning our service can be accessed from inside the cluster. So deploying that through kubectl, it hits our master, goes over here and creates that abstraction we talked about. We can say that we created another one for the backend as well. So what we get now is a cluster IP. Let's just say cluster IP for short and that is going to be an internal IP. Say it ends in a five and then another cluster IP for our, our services here. And we will say that ends in a six. So now we can an IP that we can use to for communication between these services. In addition, the kube DNS service, which is usually running by default, will make it even easier for these services to access each other. They can just use their names. So they could hit each other using the name frontend, backend, or F or B for short. So we have got that and we talked about how now the services can talk to each other by using these cluster IPS.
so communication within the clusters is solved. How about when we want to start exposing our frontend to our end user? To do that, what we'll need to do is to define a type of the service. And what we want is to load balancer. There are actually other types to expose, like node ports as well, but a load balancer, essentially what is going to do where this is internal to the actual Kubernetes worker nodes. We can create an external IP now. And this might be, let's say, a 169 address. And now, what we can do is expose that directly to the end user so that they can access that front end by directly using that service. We have talked about three major components here today. We have got pods, pods which are then deployed and managed by deployments. And then, facilitation access to those pods created by those deployments using services. Those are the three major components working together with the Kubernetes master and all the workers nodes that allow you to really redefine your DevOps workflow for deploying your application into a managed Kubernetes service. That's all from my side today. I hope it was useful for you. And of course, see you on the next video.